Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. My name is Elad, and if you're new to this channel, I'm trying to share with you my knowledge in Excel and VBA and pivot tables and all that good stuff. Today, I wanted to share with you a very nice and simple model to analyze your forecast accuracy. I've done this many times. Uh, my experience as a supply chain professional and wanted to share with you. So first off, what you see here is a dashboard and of course you can build this in whatever shape and form you want. But I'm focusing mainly on the trend of the accuracy and also the top 10, you know, let's say worst forecasted items. In this case, we're talking about a cars. Let me take you through the data. So I built some dummy data here. I looked at six US regions. I assigned a sales rep to each of them. Could be the same person, just fake names. Also, I took the top uh, 30 something cars that were sold in the US, okay, based on model. And I built, you know, a, uh, say two year span of data and over here is where I just built the dummy data with some randomness okay I just used random for every uh, section and then just some simple VLOOKUP so actually every time you change something it changes and you just I just take the data eventually which is region sales rep model date what was the actual sales and what was the forecast and eventually i just took this data over here to database copied by value sorry, pasted by value and added two helping columns gap okay it doesn't matter if it's sales minus forecast forecast minus sales and absolute gap which is the absolute value of the gap so it's always positive or zero um so I assume if you have this data, you definitely have your actual sales and your actual forecast per whatever hierarchy you have. So you can see here my hierarchy is country, region, sales rep, and model, and date. And I, I really recommend here I'm using country as sort of a um, unified level. It's good because then you can just summarize everything on the most highest level. So I always recommend that you have your first hierarchy be like a total company or total country or whatever you're working on. Then I have just a couple, couple of pivot tables. First one is to show the top 10 highest gaps. So I'm taking the ABS gap. And here is where I'm actually building the KPIs on the fly using calculated field. So I'm just adding if you don't know how to do that, you just go here, calculated field, click on add. Sorry, let's call it new. Then you have the formula itself. Let me show you. Okay, that was an unrequired field, so I'm just going to delete it. But you can take a look. I created two fields, one called nmape. nmape or MAPE, I don't know, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that is a, um, a measurement that will show you how accurate was your forecast of the, of the actual uh, product mix. So this, if you're right on, uh, you know, really depends on, you have to be right on the product, not just on the volume. It's a more harsh uh, measurement, but I think this is actual the real forecast actually accuracy that you want to measure. And the way it's calculated, it's one minus the absolute gap or error divided by the maximum between sales or forecast. That's why it's called normalized and for normalized MAPE because it takes the maximum between sales and forecast. Some people use forecast or sales. I like to use the max. I think it's gives a better, um, you know, better measurement.
but both could work. Bias, on the other hand, just wants to show you if overall your quantity matches your forecast. That's why it takes the gap divided by the max between sales and forecast. Again, I'm using, I'm using the max. You don't have to do that. You can do just by sales or forecast or whatever you want. Um, yeah, so bias, basically think of it, if you have two items, one has a forecast of 100 and sales of zero, and the other has a forecast of zero but a sales of 100, then the bias will be zero. We'll show you uh, as if everything is great, whereas the normalized MAPE will give you a very poor result in this case. All right, so that's, I've added those. Now, why I like to use the pivot, um, the calculated field in this case, because as you can see, whatever rows I have, it's going to calculate those on the fly. Instead of, you know, if you have it over here, then if you start summarizing, summarizing things up, it doesn't, will not give you the result you wanted. So these are two simple pivot tables that, that they are connected to the, all the slicers. So once you, if you take a look at the connections, you see that they are connected to both of the pivot tables. The last thing I added here is a detailed report. Sometimes you really want to see everything in a very uh, flat view. So I just put in all the data, date, country, region, model, and added the sales, the forecast, the gaps, and the calculated fields. So you see, for example, that in January 2020, the Ford Escape um, in the Central Plains had a 93% accuracy, and overall, all of the models had a 78. Okay, so you really can, here you can really play with it and see whatever results you want. It's always good to have a detailed report for these kinds of things, and this is where you're supposed to really learn what's happening. And let's go to the dashboard. So these are just the charts that are connected to the dashboard. So if you add a chart here, it's just what I did. So I took out, in this case, I took a, sorry, a combo chart. the secondary axis, switch the line to markers, took out the line, hit all the values, put the legend to the bottom, added a chart title, connected it to the text over here. Okay, second one was even simpler. Um, so yeah, so this is a very basic but effective forecast accuracy dashboard. Um, and I hope you'll be able to use it. If you want to receive this template from me, just leave a comment. I'll be happy to share with you. I'd appreciate if you could uh, you know, post a like, Comment if this video helped you and subscribe, of course, as I'm posting new videos regularly. Take care.